The roto packs is great for extra gas, but we also need an actual gas tank that's not just a one gallon thing zip tied to the roof. For that, we have a nice big old street sign. In other words, some aluminum stock to make a gas tank out of. With these power wheels, it's always a fine balance of weight distribution, like enough weight up front that, uh, you know, you've got good handling and traction, but not too much so that you can't do a wheelie. Uh, but given that this one is mid-engine instead of front-engined, um, I think I'm gonna put the gas tank up front. spaghetti shit up in here. I've got all the other stuff that I had piled into the abyss here out of the way, and it doesn't look like much, but there is a fairly large space in here between the power steering, the radiator, the differential, the shocks, and the front of the engine. Um, so I'm thinking I'll make the gas tank go down into that space, and you know, have the pickup at the very bottom of that, and it'll kind of come up through here and then have a large area, larger area at the top, kind of here under this dash panel, um, and then come up to here and have a filler cap like right here, um, you know, just behind this bar. The tricky part's just gonna be making it so that it can come out uh, because, you know, that's gotta make everything removable. You know, it's all about order of operations in terms of removing things, right? Like uh, I could make it wrap around like underneath the power steering motor, I could make it wrap around underneath there or like stick out, you know, but like if you have to remove the power steering to be able to get the gas tank out, then that means that you need clearance to move the power steering around. So, you know, a lot of factors to consider here, but I'm not too worried about making this gas tank all that big. If I can get like three gallons out of it, that's probably good enough because we'll have the roto packs on the back. So out here in the uh, forest of spare parts, I'm digging out, hopefully, if I can find it, the original gas tank from the ATV that the uh, Barbie camper started life as. Because um, I want to steal the fuel pump and fuel gauge sending unit off of that. So hopefully I'm correct in my memory of where I bury it out here. Humidifying. You know, we gotta gotta keep a human in here. We don't want ourselves to get dried out. This is yummy. This is the uh, fuel level sending unit from inside that uh, gas tank. And when I was out there digging around, this is the first one I found. There are two identical gas tanks like this out there because. Um, the one that came from this Kawasaki brute force and the brute force that we used parts from for Colonel Sanders. Um, this is definitely the one from the parts quad that we used for Colonel Sanders because that is some disgusting, crusty nastiness in there. The other one's out there somewhere, but all the parts are identical, so I can use these parts if I'm going to use them, build them into the tank, and then if these parts don't work from being too crusty, I can swap them out. So. Uh, but yeah, there's the sending unit. So obviously my new tank is gonna be a lot deeper. So I might have to change uh, change the angle of this or whatever, or the position of it. But I think it'd be cool to have a functioning fuel gauge. Uh, it's actually right there without the power being on it. So there's the fuel gauge and it works. So we might as well use it. It'd be a cool feature um, to have, especially for overlanding, you know? It's, a, it's overland power wheels. You gotta have, you gotta know how far you can go before you run out of gas. Let that soak for a while. Now for the uh, fuel pump unit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use it because it'd be really easy to use a totally different type of fuel pump. Um, this one is a vacuum powered fuel pump. It takes vacuum pulses from the cylinders and the intake uh, 
tracked and uses it to pump fuel. So it's kind of a cool setup. There we go. Wow, that is disgusting. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be pulling the one from the other gas tank once I can find it under the snow. It, it works without any electricity, so that's kind of cool. Um, not that there's a shortage of electricity, but like it'd be pretty hard to get an electric fuel pump that was much more, um, you know, lightweight and compact than that. So uh, we'll see. There's there's options, but this could be could be a good option. There we go. Now I'm gonna put that back outside so we don't have to smell it because that is terrible. It's like nothing worse than the smell of really, really, really old gas. Oh, I will steal the gas cap because I may use that too. So in an ironic twist of fate, uh, the box that the Rotopax gas cans came in is now becoming the cardboard uh, gas tank design material that I'm using for my cardboard aided design. So, you know, making a gas tank out of the box that a gas tank came in. Makes sense. Starting to look like a gas tank. Ran out of the uh, Rotopax box, so now I'm using a Fox box, Fox Shocks box. So I think that's kind of gonna be the outline of it. The uh, filler cap can be right up here on the top. Now I'm just gonna make some little side bits that stick out kind of at the angle of these things ish. I think that's pretty much the shape it's gonna be. Um, this side here is gonna look exactly the same as that. But there's no point. Uh, doing it out of cardboard because I can just use this side's template for this side when it comes to You know creating this out of aluminum. I think that that's a pretty solid volume of fuel um, It's a good location for it both uh, structurally spatially and weight distributionally uh, Because there is a large mass here up high, uh, but you don't have to fill it You could just put one gallon in if you're really really worried about the performance plus the mass is uh, very far forward, but right over the axles, so it's not cantilevered in front. That's pretty much the shape of it, so I think it's time to pull it out and cut this apart and see how to make it out of a street sign. And then put it all back together with hot liquid metal glue. There we go. Inside profile, it looks kind of like some weird demented mushroom. Yeah, it's a mushroom. Well, hey, you know, people are always saying this is like Mario Kart, so this is a mushroom from Mario. This is the this is the power up mushroom that holds your go juice. <laughs> Well, we've turned our cardboard template into a stack of cardboard and our street sign into a stack of smaller pieces of street sign. Uh, now comes the fun part where I try to assemble it and see if making it out of rigid pieces that are precise works out the same way as making it out of not so rigid pieces that are not so precise. In other words, did I get it right or not? None of these bend lines are over 90 degrees. I've found that if you go even to 90 degrees with these straight signs, it breaks. So all the ones that are under 90 degrees, I made a scribe and that's where it'll bend. Um, anything over 90 degrees, I made a cut. Obviously you could make it out of fewer pieces if you had a larger piece of stock to work with and if it was more bendable. But that's what we got. This is the main one I'm worried about bending because it's just such a long piece. Uh, I don't think the break it, that we have is gonna even do that at all. So that one I might just like make a few cuts in it and then bend it that way. Mm -hmm. 
actually got it hot enough that it behaved completely differently, so that's something. You got a good style going on this morning, Ethan. What's that? You got uh, glasses on your eyes and glasses on your hat. Oh yeah, I like to go for the double safety glasses. <laughs> you never lose them. Never lose them, except when I do. The main downside to using street signs for, uh, you know, aluminum stock is this super sticky reflective material that you have to peel off anywhere you're gonna weld. But I found that uh, get a chisel nice and sharp, warm the piece of metal up either by buffing the backside on the wire wheel to clean up the backside, like so, um, or by throwing it on top of the wood stove for a few minutes and getting it nice and warm, and then the chisel just peels that stuff right off. And then all you're left with is a little bit of sticky residue, which a little bit of brake clean, a little bit of wire wheel action, a little bit more brake clean, or paint thinner, or mineral spirits, or whatever solvent you have on hand. Ooh, there we go. That's the nice peel that we like. That roly, roly poly peel. Oh yeah, look at that. Pieces prepped, looking clean, shiny. Time to start sticking them together. Wait, that goes. Yeah. I really wish aluminum was magnetic. It would make my life so much easier. Uh, a third of a gas tank. I like how this is turning out. It's pretty sweet. I am a fan. Keep that in there. Give this a little bendy bend, and then we can check to see if the bend is adequate. So we'll check to make sure that mark actually is where I want to bend it. There is, yeah, more or less. Sliding. That's not what you want. Not bad. It's a little bit more on that side. Gradually getting this piece finished, but at this point it would have saved me a lot of time if I just cut it and I welded it. But you know, sometimes I'm just really stubborn. Uh, it's about time to put a lid on this thing, and uh, yeah, it turned out pretty close. I'm actually just gonna go with it at this angle, and then I'll just trim the excess off of here because these corners kind of stuck out anyway, so that's perfect. Um, also, I went ahead and welded every seam I could on the inside uh, as I went, just because it takes a few extra minutes and it might mean that it'll never leak. So that'd be good. Get this thing tacked on there. 
you know, do another test fit and then start looking at adding in, uh, you know, a fuel cap and the uh, pump thing and all of that stuff. That should be all the welds, and uh, I'm not sure that it's airtight, but I feel like it probably is. We'll actually find out here as it cools, it'll actually, if it's pr properly airtight, the air in there is quite hot right now, and as it cools, it'll actually like suck the sides in because, you know, suction. Let's see how it fits. That's a nice fit, honestly. See how the dash fits over it. I know I'm gonna have to trim a bunch off the underside of the dash, but that's okay. I'm gonna have to get rid of the cup holder. How sad. Darn it, that was one of the best features for our sparkling waters. Anybody wanna take bets on how many gallons it holds? So, I might have made an error. When I uh, made this top piece here, when I was doing the cardboard template, uh, I just kind of looked at it and thought, oh yeah, a straight line between this edge and this edge would be totally fine. And I even put the dash on there to check. And then, somewhere in the process, I decided I should make the top flat so it'd be easier to mount the stuff. And I didn't check to see if that would fit and it really, really doesn't. Also, I made it too wide so it doesn't fit in between the Barbie seat rests. I really just, I really just kind of messed this one up in a lot of ways. I mean, the side width is easy. I just slice it off on both sides like by to, to half an inch or an inch and then make a plate to cover the gap. I don't know what to do about, about the rest of it. how much more shenanigans we have to do. What? You're like an inch off of either side. It's totally clear. I've come up with a good solution. I got the sides trimmed down. Um, haven't welded anything in there to cover them yet, obviously, but. So, you can see now, the only real problem is this edge here is running into this dash all the way across. Uh, I cut out the cup holder here. I was gonna always have to do that, and actually, uh, I realized that is a perfect spot for the gas cap. Looks like it was meant to be there. But what I'm gonna do now uh, is to make everything clear, I'm just gonna cut the whole top off and drop the top, the lid by just an inch straight down because I already have the sides cut. I mean, obviously it'll take a little bit of time, but not the end of the world. And then that also will give me space to have this under here. I'll lose like, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple cups of gasoline volume, but that is okay in exchange for having, you know, the dash fit the way it should. So, got a little bit ahead of myself on the design of this one. You know what this is? This is my favorite thing. It's weight reduction. Not only am I gonna lose a few ounces, a few grams of weight from 
this being a flat piece, but also I'll lose, you know, a few ounces of weight from having less gasoline. Win-win! Alright, so, <laughs> gas tank take two. Um, got the top all chopped down and re-welded all the way around. Um, so now the dash actually fits right down on there. There are still a couple little things I need to trim off on the underside here, but uh, basically it fits. Gas tank is ready to go. Now I gotta turn this chunk of solid aluminum into a bung with these threads on it for ye old gas cap. So, onward to the lathe. So I've got this uh, big old hunk turned down to the right uh, diameter for the gas cap to fit onto. So now comes the fun part of um, making threads. And these threads are most likely metric. I don't really know, but it's a Kawasaki made in Japan, so probably metric. Uh, this lathe only has uh, SAE thread pitches on its gearing and stuff. So what I have to do is measure these and figure out the closest SAE thread pitch. And it seems like it's about eight threads per inch. So. I'm gonna set this up to cut eight threads per inch and make a really light pass and then measure them and see how close it is. The good news is we're dealing with soft-ish plastic on hard-ish aluminum and we only need, well, as you can see here, we only need about three threads for it to work. So, um, yeah, make some threads. Dude, Dude that gas tank is sick. <laughs> that is awesome, is that a what sign is that? Uh, it was a like a squiggly sign or something. I don't know. One of the, you know, sign. one of the. Heck yeah. the, the, the <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta do the old manual lathe because this thing is such an old piece of crap. It doesn't have the power for these deep thread cuts. I think that looks like some threads. Could still use a little cleanup, but I think that's enough to make it all the way on there. Let's see, we'll measure it. it needs to go on a little farther. So the threads aren't quite good enough, but maybe with a little bit of, as Will would say, swindling. That is what I'd say. I'm proud of you, Ethan. <laughs> <laughs> Get all up in there, dude. Get all, get all up in there close on that spiral boy. That's not what's supposed to happen. So, got the gas cap on. I love that little clickety click it does. Uh, anyway, now I uh, gotta mount the fuel pump right there. Come on, come here, come here buddy. Hey. 